Even though we lost 31-10, to 10, uh, we, get, we got fans across the pond still watching our team somehow. Okay. And that's where we're going to go to uh, Skype 1. Uh, we have uh, Norm Whitlock from uh, the Look UK. Nice. Is, in, wow. is from the British Bulldogs Brownsbacker group. Awesome. Norm, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Spoke to you guys last year once, if you recall. Oh, that's right. I do remember you being on. Uh, what was, during the Browns game yesterday, Fox had uh, – who was playing yesterday? There was oh. a soccer game. Uh, that was the Bundesliga. We always want to say the Bear Aspirin. Bear. It's Byron Munich. Byron, Byron Munich. Oh, yesterday. Byron Munich. Yeah. What kind of ratings did that game do over there yesterday? Uh, what, for the Bayern Munich game? Yeah, for that game. Uh, uh, I have no, absolutely no idea <laughs> what, the, what the ratings were for that. I was, was just so focused on the Browns yesterday. It was like the whole day was... We had a fantastic day in London, apart from the result, obviously. We had a great turnout of the British London. Bulldogs Brackers Club. Um, we must have had about 30 members there. Uh, only about five Jets fans. And so, <laughs> you know, prior to the game starting, the place was rocking with lots of woofing and uh, lots of high optimism for the, you know, the season. The, uh, we, we, we were really hoping that things had changed around. But it seems, I mean, I know it's only game one, but... It's like same old Browns, really. Um, just can't, just the same old problems. Like Kenny, your previous contributor said, um, you just, it's the same problems from last year. You know, we can't run the ball. We can't stop the run. We're getting no pressure on the opposing quarterback. And it's just same old Browns football at the moment. I'll tell you and, what. And, and the thing is, the thing is, it's, um, I didn't actually think, well, I was hoping we were going to win. I didn't expect the wins necessarily, um, but I was hoping that even if we lost, we'd be fighting right to the end, you know, tooth and nail, and it's going to be a close game. But and to be to be fair, in the first half, the um, you know the, the Browns the Browns you know played reasonably well. They, they they were still in the game, but they just imploded in the second half, and it just didn't look like they cared that much, um, which is which is a real shock, real shock. No, no, I was on the, the clock, there? and then how many? Uh, how many pints did you guys have to drink to, to make sure everything was cool by the end of the game? Uh, we went through quite a few pitches, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, as, as that second half wore on, it was just it was just ugly, wasn't it? I mean, it was ugly football. Um, the only the only bright the, the bright spark is that Johnny Manziel looked, you know, half decent. I mean, last year he had no right to be on the field whatsoever. Uh, he was just an abomination last year. But I mean, he actually looked like he knew what he was doing somewhat to the, uh, yesterday. So that was that's a good thing, but um, yeah, it's, it's the same old problems I'm afraid at the moment. Um, and I mean, looking at Mike Petton's presser, he looked he looked crushed yesterday, and and rightly so. He, you know, what as he said, there's been months to get ready for this game. It should have been close. If we didn't win, it should have been close, and it wasn't close. Uh, and it just didn't look like half the team cared that much. Um, yeah, really, just really disappointed. It's such a shame because we had a great turnout and the, the, the place was rocking in London. Um, but, yeah, same old Browns, I'm afraid. Norm, hey, thank you. We appreciate it. What time is it there, by the way? Uh, it's coming up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so it's a really nice time. <laughs> yeah. Do you work? Do you have a job or are you working from home? Uh, yeah, no, I, I do. I, I, I work. It's my day off today. I am, I'm an anesthetic nurse in a major, uh, major London hospital. Oh, wow. Very nice. I think the rest of the Browns backers there might need more anesthesia next week. So. <laughs> Thank Definitely. You. I mean, next week's going to be really telling, isn't it, against the Titans? Uh, Mariota, as you said, four touchdowns. It's going to be really, it's going to be really interesting. I think next week to see how we. I mean, if we don't come out and react, you know, to the to what happened yesterday. Uh, if we if we're flat next week. I mean, God knows, we could go, we could go in 16. But if we do, we'll still, well, actually, we'll find some way, somehow, to win a few meaningless games towards the end of the season to take us out of the Cardale Jones stakes, you know, because that is Browns football. We just do enough. Fail for Cardale. You know, All right, you know do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, we got you. Hey, thank you. We really appreciate it. I know we appreciate everybody that calls thank in, you. but we really appreciate it when you call in. And thank you, and uh, have a great day. And tell all the Browns backers there we said hi. Thanks. I will. Maybe I, maybe I can come back in a few weeks. And, hey, you're welcome uh, back every week if you anytime. want to come back. Come back every week. <laughs> okay, nice to see you guys. Have a good one. We'll see you. Thank you, wow. Norm. Wow, nice job. I got to tell you, Eric the referee does a good job of setting up. He does a great job. and I. Yeah.
Like your radio show is Therapy Monday. Yeah. This is now Anesthetic Monday or Anesthesia <laughs> Monday here on Dogs on the Run. We have now coined our Monday phrase. We're there it is. It. <laughs> uh, Rissa, you want to, uh, is that Craig Lindell I see over there? That is Craig Hi, Craig. How are you? Hey, guys. All right, Craig Lindell waiting for next year. Uh, what's on waiting for next year today? I'm just curious. Oh, man, we have our own profane podcast breaking down uh, what happened yesterday. I, I think uh, we forget Anesthesia Monday. We need Anesthesia Sunday afternoon. Then we don't have to have this show. No offense. I think I'm already <laughs> waiting for next year after the week one, honestly. <sighs> Give me your thoughts. on the, First of all, is, is that a, an entire rock band? Yeah, what's, is that just a uh, drum set behind you, or what is that? Uh, I have guitar amps over there. Okay. And then uh, the drum set is over there. Look, Look at, at that, that man. Wow. Man. Do you, are you in a band, or what, what's the deal? Used to be in a band. Uh, then the children happened. Yeah, um, so that. now I just <laughs> pretend in my basement. No, I, I, could still, I could still play a little bit. We might get the band back together someday. But I'm 36, man. It's a young man's game. <laughs> yeah, you're talking to two guys are Pierce Young, but we're old. We, yeah, well, I still think it's good. All right, give us uh, your thoughts on yesterday and, and let, us, uh, let us in on the wisdom of waiting for next year. All right, well, I, you know, I've been listening, and you guys are doing a good job breaking it down. I just want to look across the, across the field at what the Jets did coming off a 4-12 and season just to contrast what the Browns did, and then I'll, I'll give you a little, a little insight into uh, next week or my version of insight into next week against Tennessee. First of all, the Jets had a 4-12 and season, and what did they do? They went out and they signed Darrell Revis. They went out and signed Brandon Marshall. Um, that's the kind of move that you make when you have questions at your quarterback. And obviously the Jets have just as many questions at their quarterback as the Browns do at theirs. You saw the Browns, how they set up their skill positions versus how the Jets went and attacked their offseason. And uh, that is pretty much week one in a nutshell for Browns fans. They got Darrell Revis, too. I mean, um, Antonio Camardi. They got a... Uh... Who was it? Buster Screen from us. Eric so. Decker, they had signed yeah. last year. So, I mean, it, it's, he's right. I mean, it, that, and you can't say this about the Browns, Craig. You can't say that we don't have an owner that, does, that won't spend money. You know, it's, so we could say that maybe when it comes to the Indians, you can say that. But when it comes to the Browns, uh, there's no reason, and I, I get exactly where you're going. There's no reason why you can't go out when you identify that wide receiver is one of the positions that you need help at and don't get any help. Well, we had right. At the, same, the, at the same time, guys, you look lead wide, league wide and you saw Jimmy Graham change teams. You saw LaShawn McCoy change teams. How many of these big-time players change teams? And I'm not saying the Browns had any, uh, any path to any individual guy, but they got none of them. The hard part is the Brandon Marshall thing, and, and yeah. we're talking about it. He went for a fifth-round pick. You're going to tell me that he could not have helped the Cleveland Browns? And to you know, the, you know, as, as negative as you can be on this thing, Brian Hartline looks like one guy that gives everything he possibly has on every play. Yeah, you know, and I, I'm not saying that everybody else doesn't, but he appears the way he plays this game. And I, I, I mean, I'm trying to find positives because at one point yesterday, I'm like, okay, I know it was a dog game. It was horrible. What do I have to hang my hat on to say, at least we can work on this? And uh, it was, you know, Norm from England said it best. Guys, did you all watch Mike Patton yesterday after the game? He looked like somebody shot his dog. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's like, okay, we had a good first drive. And then, oh, boy, that's it. The one thing, and you pointed out the receivers, the back shoulder throw. How many times did Manziel try that? But when you have receivers that are small, 5'10", 5'11", I mean, it's not going to work. And that's. That led to a couple intercept. Uh, led to one intercept. Well, he threw the one ball behind Gary Barnage, and that's a catchable ball. I mean, it, it, no, it was the ball Jim Dre placed had a perfectly? Ball could have caught yesterday too. But they're catchable. Yeah, yeah. They're, those are pro athletes. They're paid a lot of money to make those plays. Make the damn play. That, that's what it comes down to. Make the damn play. You got to make the play. But it didn't happen. But you can see, like the Jets have athletes, bigger athletes at wide receiver, Decker and Marshall, bigger wide receivers. And we just don't have it. Uh, we we just have don't it. have that big wide receiver. No. So. Craig I'm gonna, Ross, I'm gonna make Browns fans feel better though, Andy. Well, hang on, we'll go back there. Craig, what do we got? Tell me a little bit more about waiting for next year for today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make Browns fans feel better, okay, because let's, let's not pretend like the Tennessee Titans are good. They, Marcus Mariota had a good game against a really bad team, and the Cleveland Browns should still come out in their home opener next week and plaster the Tennessee Titans. They should put Marcus Mariota on his back. I'm tired of hearing people say they're scared of Marcus Mariota today because he smashed the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If the Browns think that they've got an elite defense, which they seem to still think they have, 
um, they shouldn't be afraid of the Tennessee Titans. So I, I'm not going to listen to Browns fans talk to me about the Titans like they're good now because of the first game against Tampa. All right, Craig, hey, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We'll make sure we check you out on waitingfornextyear.com. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll talk thank to you, you soon. Um, uh, Eric, the referee, uh, just I want to make sure we're trying to stay on pace because I know you have some things you want to do in the show. Uh, what, just give me what else we have going on here. We didn't talk about this in our pre-production meeting that we never have. We don't have one. Go yeah, ahead. we actually had more planning than we've ever had for this show. Really? Uh, three minutes compared to uh, zero. Oh, that's good. Three more minutes. <laughs> what were you going to say about big wide receivers there for a second? I mean, we've got a big receiver on the sideline. Nine, $9 million on the sideline that didn't suit up. I mean, I just don't understand. But you let it go, you let it go to her prior, who we could have had out there, who's a big receiver, who's a physical receiver, who played quarterback. That way, Hartline didn't have to be our third quarterback. But, right. you know. And how about getting decision. back to a year ago, we had a big receiver by the name of Charles Johnson. Oh, yeah, we released him, and now he's the starting wide receiver in Minnesota. Well, things like that happen. I mean, you got to know talent. You got to be able to evaluate talent. If you don't know it like that, then you got to start getting some better scouts. And I think that's what it comes down to. And I think that's exactly what Andy was trying to point out. They got Brandon Marshall for a fifth round pick. Who does that fall on? Where, where is the front office when you're looking but for players like to that? Be, there doesn't seem to be a desire to go out and get that big. And I'm, I'm just fixing our earpieces because yeah. we can't hear anything coming back in. Just to let you know, because there are no rules. I can tell you everything that's going on. Yeah, we can't hear it. Like, we can't, like, I can't hear Eric. I can't hear these other guys. And we were tailing off on the end of Craig. So, um, but my point on uh, just on the Browns here, that it just doesn't, there's no sense of urgency to go out and get that big time wide receiver. And why? I, you know, I, they, like, I think Ray does a nice job of getting that possession receiver. Mm -hmm. You know, Andrew Hawkins, Taylor Gabriel, Brian Hartline, those are great guys to have on board. Yep. But it's just that we don't have Brandon Marshall. And, you know, we had Josh Gordon. That fell apart, and that was the one thing I think about when Good job. When we talk about, uh, you got it back? Yep, I, I got, got it back. You got it back? I missed it. Um, uh, like I, I wa I, the thing about Terrell Pryor I thought that was so interesting was he's fast and he's big, and that's why I was kind of disappointed when they let him go. I understood why they let him go, but it was just disappointing. Well, he was less money. He didn't cost as much. Right. He still gave Dwayne Bow $9 million, guaranteed. That's... That's a big loss. But you don't know what you have in Terrell Pryor until you put him out there on the field to play. I mean, plays in preseason, you know you played. I mean, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Ask any of those guys, any of the pros in the preseason. All they're trying to do is get through the preseason injury-free and let it go on week number one. It's exactly. everybody flying around trying to make plays. All right, let, let's, uh, let's go to Howie. Howie's on Skype 1. Hi, Howie. How are you there in the, up, bowels of you doing? Steeler country. in the bowels of Steeler country? I'm doing fine, Andy. How are you? Good. All right, your thoughts on yesterday's game. At least we're tied uh, with the Steelers. I, I should have known uh, that it was going to be the 11th year in a row to lose the opener because my clock radio went off and I could hear Sonny and Cher singing I got you babe it was like fucking groundhog day I, I mean it's always the same it's always the same you know watch the same game over and over we're like cub fans it's always the same thing but you know the the biggest disappointment to me really uh besides McCown having this no fear attitude which is going to get him killed uh if he ever gets back on the field after the concussion is the defense we have supposedly an elite defensive backfield and we're afraid to blitz. We always run three or four guys in and sit back there in a little umbrella zone. You know, we should be nose to nose on these guys, shutting them down and sending five, six rushers. I mean, that's that's how you get to the, that's what they got to do to Mariota next week. And uh, the other thing that you only see with Browns football are the bizarre things. You know, you had the dive helicopter, you know, concussion fumble thing with McCown. You've got the uh, strip of the interception uh, that Gibson made and then Marshall took back and then for God's sakes how do you have a ball go over Fitzpatrick's head we got two or three guys on top yeah. of him he's literally practically standing on his yeah. head bent over and the ball pops up into his chest well if Kenny was out here we'd say only in Cleveland <laughs> but, but is that true Pierre listen well, I mean weird junk happens to the Browns and if I could say what everybody else says you know what I would say right but is it just the Browns this weird stuff happens? I mean, you've seen weird stuff happen before. It's not just the Browns. Okay, I mean, good. it's a lot of different teams, but the Browns seem to – it's like we're cursed. But, Pierre, sense. on that play there, that, that's, that's a defensive mistake. When that ball goes over the head, 
Talk about the responsibilities. There's one guy that's got to take that quarterback off the ball because it's you know you've got the numbers. Right. It's, it's a jailbreak. It's four on one. One guy somebody takes the quarterback off the ball, and somebody's somebody got to get on the football, right? Yeah. I mean, definitely. don't you practice? I mean, that's something that's practice. That's something that they practice. That's something that they do and practice all the time. And if you don't do it, then, I mean, that's why Coach, look, look at the coach. Patton, he was just like sitting there like, oh, somebody shot my dog. Yeah, and that's why he looked like that. Because yeah, but somebody was it. on. One of the guys that was yep. rushing was on the quarterback. Yep. And that's yeah. why he was upside down and on his head. And the ball still bounced into his chest. Yeah. I mean, we just get more of the crazy shit than everybody else. You're so, right. And I know you guys have a short show today. You only got an hour, so I don't want to tie you up too long. But uh, I think I'm going to smash my clock radio for the next season opener so I don't hear that fucking song again. Well, that's good. <laughs> and if you can take out Puxatani Phil, we'll let Buckeye Chuck over there and take him down. How's that sound? Hey, there you go. Now uh, you're talking. Holly, awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, uh, Howie. You want to go your Tim or you want to go Scott here? Hey, we're coming out for game three, by the way. Uh, well, all right, we'll see you at game three. We'll try to uh, catch up with you. Call her first. Scott. Thanks, Howie. All right, let's go to uh, Scott.